Below the gridstone moors, where pilgrim skylarks soar, within the dale of Cuckled Delf, along the bounds of Eam, there stood a courting pair. But here's the strange affair: they stood full fifteen feet apart, divided by a stream. Oh, Emmet, marry me! Was Roland's earnest plea. It echoed round the limestone arches of the charming dell. I'd love to be your bride, the comely lass replied. But we must wait until this plague is past and all is well. The plague she spoke about in this way came about. A certain tailor had received the box from London town. The cloth was damp inside. He'd hung it up to dry. Before the week had run its course, the man had been struck down. The next poor soul to fall. Dwelt in the cottage small, wherein the hapless tailor had of late been pleased to lodge. Then victims three and four lived in the homes next door. A pleasing row of peakland cots beside the village church. The deadly malady. Contrived to cross the street and enter Bagshaw House, the place where Emmert's family dwelt. And then, as if not sate with its campaign of hate, it tore through all the streets of Eam and stole the people's health. The priest then formed a team. With the ex-priest of Eam, to bring some comfort to the folk of the community, they had their differences, but chose to lessen these. It was an inspirational case of Christian unity. The rector next declared. A cordon sanitaire. The people quarantine themselves to spare the wider world. This noble sacrifice reflected Jesus Christ when on the cross he bore the sin of the entire world. The wider world replied. By bringing fresh supplies to some appointed places on the village boundary line, Montpesson's well was won. So was the boundary stone. They ventured right up to the spot, but never crossed the line. And so we come once more. To our friend Roland Tor, and to his trysts with Emmet Siddle in the Cuckled Dell, although they stood apart, they still entwined their hearts, and they met daily in this way to just be by themselves. And then he came one day. She was not in place. He felt a sharp and searing pain cut through him like a knife. And though he daily came, it was a loss in vain. They sadly ne'er did meet again, at least not in this life. When mist enshrouds the moors. And cloaks its gridstone tors. Then everything is cold and clammy and reductionist. But lark song overhead helps to dispel the dread. 
Because the chirpy skylark keeps on singing in the mist And likewise Jesus Christ induces hope to rise Because he conquered death and stands beside the crystal stream And as he stoops to drink, I dearly love to think there's a couple standing with him from the bounds of Eve.